In this presentation, we're going to look at rock curves. So essentially what we're doing here is we are going to evaluate models uh, using rock curves. Essentially, they're a nice, simple uh, graphical interpretation of the uh, how well your um, model performs. So rock curve stands for receiving operating characteristic, but really I don't know if you need to know that, to be honest with you. It is a visual way of inspecting the performance of a binary classification algorithm. That bit is important, actually, because essentially what we're dealing with here is that we are dealing with um, binary classification. So just like, for example, logistic regression or anything that is essentially a binary classifier, that is what we are using. Okay, so uh, in particular, it, it compares the um, the rate at which our classifier is making correct predictions, which is the true positive rate, and also the false positive rate. My pen is acting up there. Okay, so um, that's sort of the true positive rate and false positive rate. Let's just have a look down here. We're refer referring to these definitions below. So there's a whole lot of these definitions related to a... Uh, confusion matrix, true positive rate, false positive rate. <laughs> Essentially, if you have not seen this before, what might be useful here is to have a look at a thing called accuracy, precision, and recall. Okay, before you really get into this stuff, and you actually sort of see the you might sort of see the overlaps straight away. Okay, so uh, also. Um, and another thing is the F-score. Uh, so another sort of thing we might be interested in there is that in case you're sort of working with a lot of medical type of uh, data analysis, you might sort of see this as uh, sensitivity and specificity, okay? So just to sort of see how this sort of uh, subject matter dovetails with other topics. Now, so uh, just a bit of background to it. I found this very interesting. Rock curves were first developed during World War II to an analyze radar effectiveness. So the UK, British, the British Ministry of Defence uh, uh, developed radar to sort of track incoming aircraft coming into uh, the south coast of England. But they wanted to sort of uh, check, you know, is this the sort of flock of geese or uh, a Messerschmitt airplane or a Junkers bomber or whatever? So essentially they had to sort of develop, fine tune their radar to sort of get a proper sort of sense of what was coming in. So, you know, you can't be dispatching a fighter squadron just to sort of uh, uh, make a, gra just to sort of as a welcome party for a flock of geese just flying home. Anyway, so, um, yeah, they, so they use these uh, rock curves to optimize the way they can rely on radar to detect approaching Luftwaffe aircraft and not be bothering about swans and geese. So, uh, so first off, let's start, start off with some scenarios here. So the first one is a, so what we have here, just on the side here, is we have TPR, just make that a little bit r bigger, TPR, the true positive rate. And down here we have the false positive rate, okay? So that's how this, uh, that's it, just to make it a little bit easier to read, okay? So let's sort of swing that up for now in a second. It, this is a sort of what our rock curve looks like. It's the true positive rate versus the false positive rate, okay? Now we're gonna look at some scenarios here. So this is just the guessing at random, okay? So guessing at random is like, you're just gonna say true or false at random. And quite often you'll actually be correct, okay? So when, if you're just a, and uh, if your binary classifier just works really on the basis of it's no better than a random guess this is the rock curve that you would get essentially what it would look like I hear is a diagonal line now true uh, from the bottom left to the top right okay now the reason I sort of start with that one is because all of the more sort of realistic rock curves will sort of baseline themselves off that okay so essentially, when you're guessing at random, you're probably going to be right 50% of the time. So essentially, okay, they'll be, they'll be all equal to each other. The idea is that the vertical line is a line of equality, okay? Now, um, so often rock curves will include the random rock curve, okay, underneath to provide the user with a benchmark as for what a naive classifier, a naive with just picking at random, uh, would do, okay? Any curves above the line are better than guessing, and those are um, below the line would be worse than guessing. So essentially, if your curve looks a little bit like this, 
it's essentially better than guessing okay whereas if it looks like this let it put it in green you're actually worse than guessing at random. You might as well, if you have that green line, you might as well be tossing a coin, okay? Let's just, uh, and that would be, and just tossing a coin, heads, yes, tails, no. That would be better than the green line, okay? So you want to be above the blue line, basically, at the very least, okay? Now, just for something later on, the area under the curve is, a, I'm going to bring this in as a different metric later on, but just actually as a remark, if the, if we're dividing up that area, under the curve just uh, essentially half of half of this little gray uh, half of the shaded area is under the blue line simple for, uh, geometry now a perfect classifier okay so this is the that the, the the diagonal line was just a sort of start scenario because we are always going to include these diagonal lines okay that's the guessing at random scenario okay a perfect classifier will yield a perfect trade-off between TPR and FPR. Essentially, you're really getting it right every time, okay? So so what should happen here is that your rock curve would look something like this. Now, it's not by accident that it's in this top corner here. So essentially, in, in a nutshell, we want our curve to go in this direction as much as possible, okay? And per the perfection is when it hits that top corner there, okay? So that's the perfect case, okay? Okay. Now, so yeah, the better your classifier, the more clo the closer it is the curve is to the top left corner. Okay. Now, just as a remark for a random curve, when the ra note that the random curve is included as a benchmark on the dotted line, and the total area under this curve is one. Okay. Grand. Now, worse than guessing. Okay. So I sort of mentioned this one already. Worse than guessing is when we our curve is underneath this uh, diagonal line, okay? And in this case, mostly b below the diagonal line. And essentially, it's a complete disaster, basically. You, you would have been guessing at random. So this is, where, this is where you do not want to be. You do not want to be down here. Bad. Okay? Just stay out there. Okay, now, those are some sort of extreme examples. Now, better than guessing is that, you know, it's, you know, we're going in this direction. So it's a little bit better than guessing. So you notice that there's a, we're a bit above the diagonal line, okay? A much more interesting activity is to decipher the difference between good and okay. So this is now what we're getting into. This is the main thing here, good classifier and an no okay classifier. So here, we're, what we're looking at is okay. It's better than guessing at random, okay? It's not great, but it's get better getting it random. Essentially, what we want to do here is start on our diagonal line and move to the top left corner. We're on our way. Okay. So, reasonably good. Getting a bit better. Okay. Look at that. Getting much closer. So, this is good. Okay. So, we're getting close to the top left corner. Again, up here. Okay. And that's it, really. So, essentially... Uh, that 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 that's essentially uh, the you know um, all of the various scenarios for the rock curve. If it would be better again, if we were, if we improved it, we might get here. Okay, improved it again, we might get a little bit closer again. You know, d depending on how you improve your model. Essentially, uh, that's to do with cross validation and yeah, just improving your model and really analyzing what's going on. Okay, so. Okay, so anyway, that's how to interpret the rock curve, top left corner in a nutshell. Now, uh, I mentioned this as well, the aggregate uh, area under the curve. So this is just a sort of complement to the rock curve. So it's essentially <clears throat> how much area is underneath the curve. Okay, that's as simply as all it is. So essentially, if your AUC is 1, perfectly bad, less than 0 0.5, worse than guessing at random, if it's equal to 0.5, uh, guessing at random, greater than 0.5, uh, good, better than guessing at random, and one perfectly good, okay? So this is a sort of complement to the uh, rock curve. What is the actual area under the curve, okay? So that is it, uh, area under the curve. It's usually give it to, like in for the, a lot of these type of questions you'd be given you just actually you have to interpret it and uh, or otherwise you get some lines of code to actually help you draw it out
but really what you need to do here so I'm just going to find a good example yeah so for going back here essentially you know I doubt that you know it's a nice little interesting sort of graphical exercise to actually try and compute the rock curve but I think really for most of the time really your the key skill set will just be asking you to interpret it okay and you know also area under the curve essentially the area on the curve just to sort of hammer home the point is this area here okay that is what we're asked to calculate okay so with the total area possibly bound by the curve being one okay anyway that is rock curves